I can see Laura Green there, awesome. Hi, Laura. Is that a, a background you have there or, or is yeah, it a wall? Um, we've got your background at the National Magnet Lab. This is just an array of uh, oh. uh, Florida Bitter and Francis Bitter discs. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, my background is, is also not that I am in a helicopter, but- uh, Yeah, yeah, we own these backgrounds. <laughs> Well, good. Sorry, here's, here's one that I like. <laughs> All right. Uh, Elvi, are you there? I think uh, I think he he stopped. He probably had a connection problem. Yeah, I don't know what happened. I scared him away. <laughs> yeah, I don't see him anymore. Yeah, he'll come back. Um, I'll send him a text message. All right. Uh, I don't know what happened, but our speaker suddenly disappeared. So we have to give him a couple of minutes to get back to us i think i think you killed me adrian me i did it i did nothing i was just hands off and somehow i disappeared all right um i think i i, I, I need to focus you, you, uh, you have to make it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a lot yes, of emotions you have to uh, make me again co-host adrian yeah a lot of emotions uh you know, having Elvio here is... Uh, you're it's, you're uh, a too busy big fish. <laughs> um, you know, Elvio was my first uh, postdoc advisor. So um, uh, he means a lot to me and it means a lot to me to have him here. Uh, so welcome back, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us. So, oh, I have to make you a co-host so you can... Oh, yes. Yeah. Where are you? You change your background, Laura. Now it's a different part of the lab. That one I recognize. I like this one. This is uh, for ion cyclotron resonance that can measure mass differences in complex fluids of two of about one electron mass. Okay, okay. Cool. I think I remember that part of the lab. Well, I can share already? Yes, please go ahead. Hmm. Oh, a miracle. Right. Um, pointer. I have a laser pointer yeah. and I can move. Yeah. All that's right. Perfect. All right. Let's get started. Welcome back, everyone. Um, uh, it's my pleasure today to introduce uh, Elvio Dalgoto from the University of Tennessee in Knoxville and also Oak Ridge National Lab, who's be, who will be telling us about some surprising uh, discoveries in strongly correlated materials. Please, Sylvia, go ahead. Okay, thank you, Adrian, for the invitation and for the introduction. So I have a long title there, um, Surprises When Exploring Electronic Correlated Systems at Intermediate Couplings. Perhaps the most important word is surprises. I will explain that. Um, I have a joint appointment between Tennessee and uh, Oak Ridge National Laboratory. And the work you will see today is supported by the Department of Energy. So I will, um, I will start with my collaborators because I, I have the tendency to never finish my talks and I, I forget if, if my collaborators are, are at the end, they don't get any credit. So um, I switched that order uh, a few years ago. So uh, these are my main collaborators uh, for the project that I will describe today. Uh, the six at the top are the, are the main uh, players. Um, so it's uh, Jacek Herbrich, uh, who is back in Poland as an assistant professor. He was my postdoc at Tennessee. Adriana Moreo is a joint faculty, Tennessee ORNL. Gonzalo Alvarez is a staff member at ORNL. Uh, Nitin Kaushal is a postdoc at ORNL. Uh, Narayan Mohanta is, uh, is at UT now and used to be at ORNL. And Max Schroeder is working uh, with uh, Jacek uh, together in Poland. And then there are, there are many others 
you will see many of the other names along the way in the talk. So uh, this is the what I I will try to say. Uh, this is the tentative organization. So I will argue that you can discover states by a computer simulations, and that means that once you have the the correct means, you, the good once you have a good algorithm that you can trust. Um, whatever the computer tells you is the ground state, no matter how weird it may, may look like, is actually the ground state. And so by this means, we have found many states that are difficult to anticipate. We had really no clue they were there. So in that sense, they satisfy the definition of emergent state, it's something that we couldn't predict a priori that, that would be there. The spirals will be one of those states. Um, if you add superconductivity by proximity effect to those spirals, then Majoranas appear into the game, which is uh, very charming in, this, in these times. Okay, um, I don't know if I will have the time, but time allowing, I will uh, have a little detour into a doping of uh, Haldane chains. Uh, and I will argue that there are tendencies to go superconducting when you do that. It's, it's, a, it's a very new subject that I think you would appreciate, but I'm not sure if I will have the time. Okay, so uh, we will use DMRG and Lanchos. I will not describe these techniques. Um, uh, DMRG is density matrix normalization group. Lanchos is uh, like an exact analyzation. And, but they work the best in low dimensionality. For that reason, uh, I will focus on chains and ladders. Um, and I will be using multi-orbital Hubbard models. This is very challenging. Very few groups in the world, uh, they are using this, employing these techniques, no matter how powerful they are. Uh, the, the model is very complicated. So also we have introduced simplifications which belong to the family of condo models with a localized and an itinerant degree of freedom. Um, and also the, the restriction to 1D is not so horrible because after all, there are many quasi 1D real materials that we have all eventually faced in our work and studied. For example, this is one that, that motivated us um, to start along this line. This is the one to three compound um, of the iron family. So this is the crystal structure. This is a typical iron plane of the iron family of superconductors. But you see that there is a missing line here. And then there is another missing line here and one more here and so on. So they are defining uh, two leg ladders like in the days of the cuprates. Um, so you, here you have in dark blue, one ladder, another ladder, another, 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 and so on. So they're weakly coupled. And the, this system goes superconducting at high pressure. There are many other compounds with the, of the same family with a different uh, chemical composition. The one with selenium has a very exotic spin arrangement. I will discuss that in, in just a minute. And uh, they also superconduct with pressure. Uh, there are chains now that have been um, reported with the valence of two plus. Uh, that's important because if in general the chains with iron they have a valence of three plus and that sort of is a, is a special case but uh, with the two plus is uh, is the same family as as the iron in, in the planes and the ladders and of course there are many other materials probably some of you uh, may recall the days of the copper oxides where chains and ladders were one of the hot topics of the moment some some time ago so I will start with um, some concepts. I will, uh, I will use extensively cartoons and I will refer to you to a publication in order to see the actual result. You know, it's, I'm introducing a cartoon only to, so that the listeners, uh, they can understand the concept. So I will start with the orbital selective mode phase, OSMP. And this uh, exemplifies the main idea. This was introduced uh, in the 90s, if I remember correctly, by Anisimov, uh, Maurice Rice, and others. 
um, at the level of Minfield, and we were the first ones with DMRG to confirm all these ideas. And suppose that you have two orbitals, this is the density of the states, and one orbital is, is narrow compared to the other one. And, and suppose that they are shifted a little bit by crystal field. So what happens when you introduce U, the Hubbard U? Uh, when you introduce the Hubbard U, the orbital that is the narrowest uh, is the most effective uh, with increasing U. And there are many cases, is, this is not a pathological situation, it occurs often that uh, there is a gap opening in one of the orbitals and the other one remains uh, gapless. Uh, you can consult this publication to see the actual density of the states, which is, a, as you can imagine, is a bit more complicated than the cartoon. Um, for example, the type of models that we have used, the, for the case of three orbitals, we have a, an orbital that is barely populated with electrons, so it has electron pockets here and here. And then there are two near the generate orbitals, which are almost entirely populated. So there is a whole pocket at the center. So this is our attempt to capture a little bit of the physics of the, of the um, iron superconductors. We have a pocket at the center and two um, electron pockets um, at the extremes. And the real material has also two electron pockets along the other axis. Um, so one of the surprises that we found in this early work in 2014 is that the magnetic order comes in the form of blocks. Um, there are regimes of parameter space which are canonically ferromagnetic or a stagger up, down, up, down, but there are uh, robust places in the phase diagram where you have, for example, two spins up, two down, two up, two down. This is the localized degree of freedom. Um, and the itinerant, I am not showing the the actual arrows, but they all have their spin um, and they align with the localized due to the Hun coupling. So overall is a is an entity that has two up, two down, and so on. Right? So, so I went already through the, uh, the technicalities. We use the multi-orbital Hubbard model, Lanchos, DMRG, parameters. I don't want to bore you with uh, with the Hamiltonian, which is uh, we will cover an entire page. Um, so there is a a coupling called U, the Hubbard. There is a Hun coupling that plays an important role. There is a bandwidth that also is very important. The spin or rate coupling will appear in a fraction of the talk only, and the electronic density, of course. So let me start with some of the results. Um, well, this, this page is a bit dense, but um, let me say that uh, you can consult this literature for, for all the small details. Um, for example, here we started noticing that the three orbital is a bit uh, too much, even for the mighty DMRG. So we, we made a reduction to two orbitals. Two is the minimum you need. Uh, one is localized and the other one is, is itinerant. And we changed the, the number of electrons in the itinerant band. The localized always has one. Uh, my collaborators noticed that there is a way to map the three orbital to the two orbital. I, I don't want to spend time going into that, but the fact is that density 2.5, crudely represented with one arrow up and, and one a little bit down, um, is, um, is the one that has the same block order. So uh, with that, under control, then they started modifying the electronic density and they went uh, one way or the other and uh, they found all kinds of blocks. These are the ground states. They are all, all of these are immersion states. We had no clue that they were there. Um, and for example, you can see blocks of three, blocks of four. Then this very weird state that we have barely touched. Um, so, the, and they all manifest themselves as peaks in the uh, uh, spin structure factor. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to remark, to be fair, with my former colleagues in Bariloche in Argentina, that they also reported uh, phases of this nature in the area of manganites. Um, they call them island phases, I'm calling them block phases. And they have the, this, they use classical spins, I'm using quantum spins. But there are, there are several uh, similarities between the, the two approaches. 
So we found all these weird states. If you use ladders, you also find a, a variety of exotic states. Um, for example, here you have a two by one block. Here, the two lines represent the two legs of the ladder and the, the other direction are the rungs. So you have a two by one block. Here you have a two by two block. Here, uh, there are still three side blocks, but antiferromagnetically ordered. There are all kinds of weird states. Um, it is missing in this page, but later you will see a, a citation to a, a recent publication where we document all the states. And two of these have already been um, found experimentally. So these two are real. Um, the rest, I don't know, maybe um, it's too complicated to, to manipulate the, the valence and, and the, the doping, but at least two of them are under control. Um, one problem that we're facing when we compare theory and experiments is that the experimentalists have only been able to do powder uh, samples. Um, when I hear that, I never know if, if it is because they didn't spend enough time or for what reason, but someday probably we will have single crystal. Um, the, this, we're making predictions here for the single crystals. If they are able to do, to get single crystals large enough for a neutron scattering experiment, then this type of results is what they are supposed to see. When they are in the block regime, there are materials that are known to be there from neutron, uh, from diffraction neutron scattering. The, the spin wave, and now we shifted to uh, pi over two uh, in the usual notation because now the block, the magnetic order has a periodicity of two. Um, now there are uh, an array of optical features. They were also observed experimentally. We believe that they are caused by internal excitations. So these blocks by no means are too rigid arrows uh, that are perfect. Um, the the Hun coupling is, is it's not infinite. Um, so you could be uh, partially um, in states that are not fully ordered. Um, so we believe that the nature of these optical uh, modes is internal excitations within the block. And we found similar results in the, in the ladders. And then for, for example, I will not go through the S of Q and Omega for so many things. Um, Maybe I forgot to say, this is S of Q and Omega. Um, so for the three side block, now the, the spin wave has shifted to pi over three. Um, so here you have it. There is some way of pi. That's a bit uh, surprising, but the way that pi arises from, because this is not a perfect, like a sine or cosine wave. It, it has this, these walls. So, um, it, we believe that's a reason for this uh, small weight here. And again, you have optical weight, optical uh, modes. So it's, it's very rich. It would be very nice to have single crystals someday to confirm these experiments, these uh, predictions, I'm sorry. So overall, if you consult this publication, you will see a summary containing the phase diagram. This is the Hubbard U in units of the bandwidth. This is the electronic density. Um, it, can be, it can appear in different languages. If you focus on two orbitals, this limit will have two particles. This one will have three particles. If you simplify to a condo Hamiltonian, um, the language changes because you are reducing the number of mobile electrons here. Here is two because there are only two up here. One because there is only one in the mobile sector. But nevertheless, uh, the, the important thing is to look at the, how rich the phase diagram is. You see, you, you have these block phases that were confirmed, the three, three block. The four block appears in such a tiny place that I didn't even um, place it, but it is in some little corner. Then you have all the other weird states. There's a, a big ferromagnetic island. Um, so this, these are all immersion states, as I said in, at the beginning. And then we found this other immersion state in, in yellow. These are uh, uh, spirals. Uh, this is quite surprising. It's an incommensurate magnetism. In the early work, 
which has said something cryptic here, we see incommensurability. Um, then we went further and we studied the nature of that um, spin order. And we found some big surprises. Um, the, this is a spiral made out of blocks. In retrospect, since we have the blocks already preformed here, these are collinear blocks. Yeah, okay, the, the incommensurate magnetism, if it goes a spiral, in retrospect, it's not too um, difficult to anticipate that it will, make, will be made out of individual blocks. But, but you know, it's, it's nice to see it explicitly. So this is the one that uh, we will focus the most. A regular spiral, we have the same angle between the spins. Uh, a block spiral, we have a block, then an angle separating from the next two blocks and, and so on and so forth. So uh, you can consult this paper. This is the proceedings of the National Academy. There is one uh, material that is incommensurate, but these are all powders again. So it's too early to claim that there is a realization of this state, but maybe someday uh, the miracle will happen. And uh, once you see the phase diagram, you realize that there is a big ferromagnetic island. Uh, I didn't say it explicitly, but at the extremes, at the two extremes, there is a stagger order, antiferromagnetic canonical stagger order. So we believe that uh, these strange block states are uh, a compromise between two, two tendencies, ferro versus antiferro. Um, so there's like a super exchange favoring antiferro anti order and the double exchange favors ferro. So, um, so all this area of the phase diagram is sandwiched between two dominant forces. So we believe that these are attempts by the system to have a little bit of ferromagnetism and in between the blocks, a little bit of antiferromagnetism. Yeah, we call this hidden frustration. It's not obvious at the Hamiltonian level at all, but um, maybe we should find a more charming title, but uh, for the time being, we call it hidden frustration. Okay, so here comes uh, the portion of the, of the topology. Um, turns out that uh, in this paper that appeared not, not long ago, um, we reported that um, Majoranas can develop if you do the following. Uh, suppose that you take the chain that I have studied so far um, and you select the value of U, the value of the density, the Hun coupling, in such a way that you are in that yellow phase that I showed you before, um, then you are in the spiral state. And then you place this on top of a two-dimensional superconductor. So this, uh, this is the negative U Havar model. Um, it's too much to handle everything in a quantum mechanical way, but uh, in, for the negative U Havar model, it's a well-established uh, a procedure to use the volume of the chain. Volume of the chain is a, is a mean field self consistent approximation that works very well. Um, so we, that's, this is what we did. We had the DMRG, which is um, exact or almost exact for the 1D system. We have the volume of the chain for the 2D system. Um, and we allow a back and forth between the two, which is uh, cryptically represented by this hopping. Uh, because we have preformed pairs in the plane, uh, you, you could conceive the notion that a preformed pair jumps from the plane to the spiral and, um, and back, back and forth. Um, the A's are the fermions of the plane, the C's are the fermions of the spiral. So, um, so we introduced this, the problem still is complicated, so we have to use the value of the chain. Um, so we have to introduce a couple of um, uh, mean, field, mean field order parameters, one for the chain, one for the, um, for the plane to describe the superconductivity, and, and iterate. Right? It's, um, I think we are the first ones to do this by this complicated way. Um, so the number of particles is totally conserved, if you only focus on the chain and you introduce a pair in field, then you have to work in the grand canonical ensemble. It's, 
it's, it's, it's complicated, but uh, by this procedure, you have everything under control. Um, well, let's see what happened. We look at the local density of the states. Uh, and this is what we found. This the local density of states is a, is a big effort calculation, even with the DMRG introducing the frequency uh, extra axis is, is, uh, is a big penalization in time. Adrian knows everything about this topic. He worked with, with Steve White in this area. Um, so this is what we found. Uh, there is a gap induced by the superconductivity. Essentially, the spiral notices that there is a superconductor, uh, a robust superconductor in the vicinity. So by proximity, it acquires superconductivity. Uh, and so now it has a gap. This, these are results for the spiral. Um, but we also see at zero, there are these two big uh, spikes in yellow. Um, these are the Majoranas that have developed. Um, so it looks like a topological superconductor. It has the Majoranas. We also measure the amount of singlet and triplet pairing. And both of them are finite. So it has all the ingredients of a topological superconductor now. Um, now, uh, before you look at the numbers in more detail, I want to warn you that we have to exaggerate tremendously the amount of superconductivity. Otherwise, these Majoranas start overlapping. And we have serious limitations with regards to the lattice sizes. So at least to get the, the physics, to get the main concepts, we, um, uh, we increase the, the superconductivity to something like a critical temperature of 1,000 Kelvin, uh, totally exaggerated so that we reduce the size of the Majoranas and, and we can see them. Otherwise, they could be overlapping too much. Um, so this is what we found. So that's, that's quite interesting. Um, um, so I, I want to say two more things in this context. The, um, there, are, there are people that work on this topic before. I want to be fair with, with all my colleagues. They are all cited in our uh, publications, they use a classical spiral. Um, so what they did is they place uh, the superconductor in contact with a classical frozen spiral. And then if you do a gauge transformation, at every site, you can align your spin so that you, um, you take care of the, of the angle of the classical spiral. Uh, once you do that, you end up with an effective model that it has a spinal recoupling and an external field. So it's quite interesting that that's the one that originally was predicted to present the, the Majorana peaks. Um, so, the, so many people anticipated this by classical means. The merit of our paper is that everything is quantum here. So this is a nice cartoon that, um, that we use uh, to for broad audiences. Um, suppose that you start uh, at the small values of the how are you? Then you have a, a, some kind of collinear order. You know, first there is a paramagnetic state, then there is collinear order. Uh, it can have the up and down, or it can have the blocks, all collinear. And there is a superconducting gap that has been uh, that is by proximity effect. So this is a trivial superconductor. Then when you keep on increasing the electron electron correlation, that means when you increase the how are you, then it becomes a, a topological uh, superconductor. It's uh, because of the spiral development. And, and then you have a Majorana edge state, right? So the spiral goes together with the Majorana and the uh, collinear arrangement uh, does not have Majorana. In this sense, the U is crucial. If you work uh, very, at very small, uh, how are you? You don't, you don't see any of these physics. That was also a reason why the paper was, was accepted in, in Nature Communications, right? Because it's, here is an effect, an important effect of the how are you that, we, that you are seeing, not only that everything is quantum. Okay. Uh, by the way, you can ask questions at any moment. Um, so how do we how can we go to um, a two-dimensional environment 
Um, so one way to do it is um, I will start with an area that it's at first sight, it seems totally unrelated to the Majorana, but then in a couple of pages, I will converge to, um, to put them together. And so I, I'm switching to, to this publication of ours, and there were many others uh, before, uh, where we, we uh, study a geometry like given here. This is, uh, this is something that can be done experimentally. You can have layers of an iridate. The iridate has a robust spin of recoupling, has a, um, because iridium is in the 5D row. Uh, then uh, you place that on top of a manganite. The manganite, if, if there is a strontium replacing lanthanum, you have a, a metallic manganite, but no spin of recoupling because it's a 3D row. The fact is that uh, in the vicinity of the two, there are a few layers that, um, that get, uh, that because Iridium is so close, they get the shalushinsky moria interaction. So by proximity to a compound of the, of the 5D row, and due to the broken inversion symmetry, when you are at the interface, the top and the bottom are different. So there is a, a broken inversion symmetry. Um, then you develop an in-plane uh, shaloshinsky moria interaction. You know, many others have worked on this. They are all cited in our publication. We don't claim to be at all the first. Um, and the story is that the model that we use, probably in that respect, this is the first time. The model that we use are supposed to be in just a combination of its spins. We also allow for itinerant electrons. Um, sorry that this is so um, complicated, the Hamiltonian, but this is the famous double exchange that works very well for manganites. Uh, I will not go through every symbol. Look at this, this is very messy. But for example, here we have the berry phase that uh, tells you that you are in the very large Hunkapin limit. That's an approximation. Um, the important point is that the interfacial uh, layers, they acquire a, a yeloshinsky moria interaction of this form. So all the rest is a canonical double exchange with a magnetic field with some anisotropy. Uh, but then we have this term. This happens only in a few layers. Um, and that's important because now those layers because of the presence of a moria, they don't go ferromagnetic like, like the rest of the, of the manganite. Uh, if you look at, the, at this term from the perspective of this term, what they want to do is the D, uh, the Shaloshinsky moria is in plane, um, being a minus dot cross type of interaction, then the spins want to be perpendicular to the D. And, and then the next one, uh, the next site will also want to have a 90 degree, but, but you're essentially you are rotating into a spiral arrangement um, and, and you are creating tendencies that uh, replicate what I showed you before in 1D. Mm -hmm. um, so this is an interesting result that we found that Narayan uh, Mohanta was the, the key player. Uh, this emerges from a Monte Carlo simulation of the double exchange is, is costly numerically. Others have found this before using just classical spins. Um, so we, by no means we, we have discovered this, this result. We, we simply have now the ability of having fermions there, studying the anomalous quantum Hall effect and so on. Um, but this is what you get at intermediate values of the Chaloshinsky moria and the uh, magnetic field, you get a skirmion crystal. Um, for example, if you, uh, if you start at this point where the pointer is, uh, you have a spin up. You can see the scale here. Uh, red means spin up, blue spin down. So you start with a spin up, you go into the center, the bluish region is the spin down, and then the red is a spin up. So essentially the spin goes from, from up, through a twist to down and then up. So you have a, a twist in the spin and that happens in all directions. So this is what people call a, a skirmion. 
you see that there are small imperfections because this is, this is a real calculation. We start at high temperature, we slowly cool down. Um, um, so the system doesn't have enough time not to be trapped at least partially into some metastable state. So here there are two schemes that have merged into this big entity, but the majority are in a triangular lattice, as you can see. That's the, that's the main result. So we can create one of these uh, exotic structures. And then in this recent publication, um, and also there is a paper by Dirk Moore um, in, in MPJ quantum materials uh, in parallel, um, we have set up a, a two-dimensional uh, structure uh, where you know, it's, it's a bit complicated to go through, through all the details, but essentially think of it as you have a, a lower layer that has the, the skirmium crystal. Then you have a middle layer that is, is the one that will be influenced by the bottom and the top. The middle layer is a 2D electron gas. Um, at the top, we place a superconductor. And in this particular geometry, we have carved like a little 1D channel uh, in the superconductor. So this is like a Josephson uh, junction. Um, in the geometry of, of Dirk, they, they didn't have that. They, they focus on uh, Majorana modes that are moving around the, the system in the, uh, at the frontier in 2D. Here, they, we will focus on Majoranas that will develop at these uh, yellow points. So essentially, we have this. We have a, a model for the 2D electron gas. You know, the theorists will immediately recognize the notation. This is a tie binding term, canonical electrons moving. Um, then you have um, a, a chemical potential. The coupling with the exotic spin background because of the lower layer and the coupling with a pairing field because of the top layer. Right, so it's an electron gas that has a, a complicated spiral-like arrangement and has superconductivity from bottom and top. Um, so the fact is that this geometry uh, remarkably creates the uh, the Majoranas. You know, I I I didn't prepare. I didn't include in the presentation the, the peaks or all the all the levels that we have but there is a zero energy level that corresponds to, to having one of these Majoranas here and here. So we, in that sense, we have achieved our goal. Um, this is a minor detail. You could place the skirmium crystal totally by hand, the most ideal one you can imagine, or you can do what we did with, with insisting in keeping most of the calculation from as um, basic principles as possible. So what we did was generated the screaming crystal by the Monte Carlo uh, procedure, annealing and, and so on. So, um, so either way, you get the Majorans, right? So um, this is about 40 minutes. And um, so I'm guessing that I have time to so Adrian, you're the boss. Uh, I have time to to go through the the superconductivity, right? Sure, absolutely. Plenty of time. Okay. If you if anybody has any question about the previous top topic, uh, feel free to do it now or toward the end. You know, interrupt me at any time. Okay. So now I will have a detour into superconductivity. Um, there are some exotic states. Some of the exotic states I reported to you show pairing tendencies. Uh, not all of them. Uh, we have explored several. The majority don't have, uh, they don't go superconducting with whole doping. But some of the states do it. Mm -hmm. So I will focus on, for example, the two by one block. So this is a ladder. Um, but so it, I'm sorry, this looks like a ladder, but it's a 1D system. Geometrically, you can split one orbital from the other just by hand. Uh, I call them orbital A and orbital B. 
you split them, and then you realize that the geometry resembles that of the two-leg ladder. It's, but this is a 1D chain hmm? um, with two orbitals. One of, of the cases I show you before. The one leg and the other of this fictitious ladder, meaning one orbital and the other, they are coupled by the Hun coupling. So they are ferromagnetic. Um, so you have a, a one half and one half coupled. This gives you spin one. Then another spin one pointing up, another one half down, uh, sorry, spin one pointing down and so on and so forth. So this actually resembles very much the Haldane chain. You know, the, uh, Duncan Haldane introduced this concept a few decades ago. This state as shown in the cartoon is incorrect. This state actually is far more exotic. It has exponentially decaying correlation functions. It has a spin gap and it has a exotic edge states. A spin one, a spin one half edge states. Um, so what we will do, what follows is um, an exploration of this, but from the fermionic point of view, because rather than using explicitly a spin ones, we can use the fermionic version. Now we have a, a Hubbard system with two orbitals, and that will allow us, you know, among other things, to dope with holes. You can, you can check these publications. Uh, there is another work independently done by the group in, the, in, in Slack and Berkeley. They reported similar results. Um, so this is what we found. I'm showing you just a tiny fraction of what we found. What you see here is I'm changing the how are you. Uh, I'm working at a ratio of who coupling over U, which is fairly robust. Um, intermediate range couplings, not very large U. At very large U, nothing, nothing uh, has any tendency to superconduct. Um, so what, what you have in the vertical axis is a quantity called the binding energy. It is defined here in a bit of a cryptic way. Uh, N is the number of electrons uh, of the undoped system. N minus one is, is the number, of, is, is when you have one hole, N minus one. When you have two holes, it's N minus two. So if the two holes were far away from each other, essentially uh, the energy of two holes is the same as two times the energy of one hole. So in the limit when there is no binding of any kind, you will get a result that is, uh, is supposed to be zero. Here we have only finite size uh, systems. You, you don't get a perfect zero, but you see as you go from H size to 16, uh, it is going down. Here it is also going down. Um, the good thing is that there is a negative region. The negative region indicates that there is a bound state. It is like a Cooper pair, essentially. Uh, there is a bound state here. And this is very costly numerically. So we only have at the point that was supposed to be the best um, for, for, the, for the pairing. We studied 48 sites and 64 sites. Fortunately, they lie uh, one on top of the other. Um, so it, I think it is confirmed that you have a tendency to form a, a bound state. So this is like a Cooper pair. It's a spin singlet. Um, um, it's interesting that the U cannot be neither very small nor very large. For example, at very large U, we notice that ferromagnetism wins. Uh, this is a result that um, in case somebody of the, of the, of the group in, in Argentina, in Bariloche, uh, looks at the video of this presentation, um, with Karen Halber and Jose Riera many years ago, um, we, we found with a TJ version of the Howard model, we've, we found results like this, some place where there was a tendency to form Cooper pairs and, some, and ferromagnetism was strongly competing. But now we have a um, you know, slightly more realistic system with a full, full hover. And we also have measured pair-pair correlations um, and they are very robust for a 1D system, okay? So everything in 1D decays like a power law. 
uh, you, you cannot have long run shorter, but um, they are very robust. So we see these tendencies. So I want to give you a hand waving understanding of the physics. Um, is, I think it's very charming that what we have found. It was already envisioned by Ian Affleck uh, many years ago. But again, this is now with, with true fermions. Uh, you can consult this, this publication uh, last year um, where you see all the results. So the, the story is that we have found a variational state that seems to capture the essence of this problem. Um, um, when, you start, when you compare with a Langchos uh, technique uh, results, Langchos you cannot do more than about 10 sites or so, but at least you can do that. Um, when, you, when you look at the overlaps, uh, there is a very robust overlap. And when you compare spin-spin correlations, they are very similar. All the details are in, are in this paper. So we trust that this is a good variational state. So let me tell you what it is, because it sounds so, so cryptic. So here we have the two orbitals, A and B, because this is a chain after all. Um, so the, the way to construct the state resembles the variational, the, the RVV of Phil Anderson. Uh, you, I don't know if all the young people in the uh, listening to this remember what the RVV is. The resonant valence bond is basically like a liquid of a spin singlets. Uh, it was proposed by Phil Anderson and, and collaborators to describe the cuprates. And here we are adding the, the where orbital in front um, to remind you that this combination of these blue things that are spin singlets um, happens with one axis being the, the orbital. So the way to construct the state that we propose is you start with the first state, suppose that you have open boundary conditions. There is a, there is a state and the rule says, pick up one of the two and create a singlet with any of the other two of the, of the nearest neighbor. Uh, here, I'm just using an arrow because you know, up, down, minus, down, up, and, and the opposite, down, up, minus, uh, up, down, uh, they differ in a sign. So the, in, the singlets are in that way, oriented objects, but uh, never mind the, the, the orientation. Just think of this as a singlet. So you, you couple these two, and then the rule that we follow is Okay, now we have a free one half. Couple it with any of the other two, the one that you prefer. For example, the same orbital here. You go to the next site, and for example, you can make a coupling, uh, a link in different orbitals, and so on and so forth. And you have to do this in all possible combinations. So you can imagine that as the lattice size grows, you there are many, many. Uh, not as many as in the original RVB of Phil, but uh, a large number. You combine them um, um, and compare with the Langchos for the, for the true two orbital Hubbard, the results are very, very similar. And also you see here spontaneously, you have a, a spin one half that is free. This is the edge spin one half, right? So it has all the features because you have these singlets, it also has a spin gap. Every time you break one of these singlets, you are paying energy. So, it's, um, so it has all the, all the features of the original Haldane state. Um, so the, if you look at this thing, the, the incredible result is that this is supposed to represent a spin one chain. Uh, and it, it does. By construction, if you consult how we start the publication, we start with spins one. And then slowly we, we, we change the language into the spins one half. But uh, I assure you that at every site, you do have a spin one. It can be pointing up, sideways, or down. But at every site, you do have a spin one. Um, so this is a very exotic way of seeing it. It's, it resembles what Ian Affleck did uh, many years ago. Um, so the, the big punchline, is that in what you think is a harmless spin one system with a spins one next to the other, there are hidden preformed spin one half singlets. So not a spin one singlet, a spin one half singlet. Um, 
And this is uh, something that Ian Affleck represented in this manner many years ago, uh, using only only spins in in his effort. Uh, the spins one half were were auxiliary spins. In, in my case, these are real spins from the two orbital nature of the problem. Um, but it's quite quite shocking. There are hidden preformed singlets. So from that perspective, then we can um, recycle what we and many, many others did in the 90s and early 2000s when uh, copper ladders were, um, were being extensively studied. This was a cartoon that, for example, if you were giving a colloquium, if you wanted to explain the pairing, this is the cartoon that you would use. It uh, turns out that a good representation of the undope ladder is to have a spin singlet along the rungs. Just a spin singlet here, the next rung, a spin singlet, and so on. These are true legs, not no longer orbitals. Um, so they are happily forming a spin singlet. If you bring one hole, you break one of the spin singlets. You pay energy. So naturally, if you have two holes, and if you want to uh, break as few singlets as possible, uh, then you you just pair them. You place them in the same run. Of course, this is a super crude approximation to reality, but um, this, um, you know, to transmit to a general audience, it has worked very well. Now let's, let's look at the new problem. We have all these preformed singlets and repeat the same idea. Um, if you introduce a hole, it breaks one of the singlets. If you introduce another hole far away, it breaks two singlets. If you place them in the place where one of the uh, blue arrows was, then you, you break only one singlet. Absolutely the same, the same idea. And we know that both of them have clear tendencies to pair and to superconduct. So um, in that respect, they are, they are related. Now, uh, only, the, only the, the one on the right has the edge states, uh, not, not the two-leg ladder. So maybe one is can be called topological and the other is non-topological. So in summary, the spin halden chain represented as a two orbital Hubbard model uh, goes superconducting with hole doping. One uh, caveat here is that we are using a unit matrix hopping. Um, that's a problem. Right now, with, uh, with a, a postdoc at, um, at UT, uh, Laurel, we are trying to analyze to what extent we can relax this approximation. Um, because in reality, materials, if you have two nearly perfectly degenerate orbitals, very often the lattice will try to find a rearrangement of atoms that breaks the degeneracy. So um, we want to study what is the range of validity of everything we said with respect to the, to the matrix, the uh, hopping matrix. So results will appear soon. Yes. Yeah. And a naive question. So uh, I imagine you is large here because you want single occupied um, orbitals, but um, also the next, I mean, if you if you imagine having your Hund uh, exchange being the, the next uh, dominant energy scale, then here you'd be breaking two triplets uh, uh, and paying two times the Hund energy, right? Um, so it doesn't, I mean, intuitively or naively, it doesn't seem energetically favorable um, compared to putting the two holes on the same rung or the same side. Well, we, we, we thought about that, but uh, it, it didn't, in practice, it, it actually didn't work uh, uh, at all. Yeah, what, what uh, Adrian is saying is that um, there is another hidden scale here. So we have the U and we have the Hun coupling, which is, uh, the next uh, larger scale. Um, so you may think that these two, um, that the pairing will be here. And Adrian, you're right. But then you have to increase, you have to introduce a little bit of an isotopy. Please check the original paper and also the paper of the, of the Berkeley group. You will see that if you make the system, if you introduce an easy plane, uh, an isotropy, there is a transition from this state to a state where this, the, the dominant structure are 
the, the triplets uh, per side. So at that point, the two holes pair along the run, which is exactly what you said. And this is exactly what we were expecting at the beginning. We were expecting the, the holes to go in the same site and form triplets, and they do. But uh, the magic is that there is a range of couplings, admittedly uh, small, where uh, this thing does not happen. What you're describing is a triplet superconductor. That's a very good observation. It's a triplet superconductor. And in this paper, you can see the phase diagram changing this uh, EC axis and isotropy. And there is a gigantic area of triplet superconductivity based on your intuition on the Hun coupling. But um, remarkably, there is a, a pocket where you get this state. Uh, the numbers conspire, the, the use cannot be too large. The Hun has to be robust, but not too much. Um, and, and, and there is a place that in the phase diagram where this wins. You know, there is nothing wrong with what you said. And it happens over a vast area in parameter space, but not the entire parameter space. So it's a, please, please consult this, this publication and you will see the details. You're, you're right, essentially you're right. Thank you. Okay, so it is uh, very close to 4 p.m. So uh, majestically, I am timing this perfectly. Uh, so, um, so here you have the summary. The summary is basically the same as the introduction. So we have found immersion states. Um, once you have computer resources that are sufficiently robust, as we have at ORNL, um, and you have many body algorithms that you trust, like the DMRG, then whatever the computer tells you the ground state, you have, to, you have to accept it. And we found all these weird states Spiders was one of them. And then by proximity effect to a superconductor, we, we get this Majoradas. Um, I didn't say it, but probably some question in your mind is how is that it happens? Those that study the classical uh, spiral, not the quantum as we did, but the classical, you can do a gauge transformation. At every site, you can rotate the, the fermions uh, to get rid of, of this spiral. And in the new basis, you get fermions with a spin or recoupling plus an external magnetic field. So by a gauge transformation, you go from this system to the system that many others studied before as the, the platform for Majoranas. Um, now, when, when it is quantum as we did, it's more complicated, but at least some intuition is there. And then you saw the results about the, the dope halden chain um, fermionic, the fermionic version of the Halden chain. And it seems to go superconducting. Now, there is a big gap here. We, we do not know what material will realize that. We need two orbitals near the generator uh, to realize the physics we are talking about. So uh, we have to talk to crystal growers. And these are the main references, the same that you saw before. Okay, well, thank you very much. We have a live audience here. They're all applauding. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you very so much. Uh, so now the session is open for questions from the audience. Uh, feel free to unmute yourself if you have any questions for Edvio, um, or you can raise your hand or post it on the chat and I'll read it for you. I'm, I'm, I'm curious. So um, with all the resources you, you have uh, at your disposal there with Oak Ridge and, and the university, uh, do, do you have any, uh, are there any efforts to, uh, to create and study this um, manganite um, iridate heterostructures experimentally? Oh, yes, 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 yes. This, uh, there is a group of Honyun Lee is an experimentalist that uh, has expertise in, in the growth of, uh, of size one over the other. And to my knowledge, they have already realized this. Yes. Um, so this is the what you're talking about. Let me see if I can. OK, I'm trying to move. OK, so what you're talking about yeah, is yeah. this. Um, and this is this has been done experimentally, yes. Mm -hmm. um, 
So we have the, this group at ORNL, there are groups in Japan working on this. Um, how, so, do they, how do they, um, you know, the, because the, 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 the schemians are at the interface, so how do they know they have schemians? Hmm. Good question. They, they go through um, measurements of transport and they see this anomalous quantum Hall effect. Mm -hmm. uh, so if they they manage to study sigma of sigma x y, sigma x y, we have a behavior that is exotic. Uh, mm -hmm. That's the reason it, it, it is called anomalous. Um, they claim to have seen it. So I don't, probably there is a way with some some um, local. Um, probes to actually see the skirmions because they are very large objects. You see, in, in my case, this is not a real size skirmion. In, in reality, these things are much bigger. Mm -hmm. So probably there are other ways to, to, to visualize them. But you know, transport is one way. Uh, here we, you know, it's like I it's a problem of everybody doing some sort of medical work. If you, if you want to see what you're getting, very often you have to exaggerate parameters, as I did with the superconductor um, in the Majorana case. Um, here we, we have a, a very strong Janoshinsky Morillo and a very strong magnetic field in order to get these small experiments. Mm -hmm. you know, the real ones are much, much fatter. So yeah, apparently there are ways to, to do all this. And um, look at the papers of Hon Yun Yi mm -hmm. from uh, Ogrish, uh, Tokura in Japan. Um, they have all worked in the creation of a, a skirmion structure. That not, not because they want to, to have the Majorana, but because they want to use the skirmions as, as bits in some memory device. Right? So they want to have either the schemion as a, as a yes, or no schemion as a no, or, or up and down. Um, so it is in that context that the schemions are studied the most. Uh, placing them together, like in here, I think only, a, only two groups have done this, uh, Dirk and ourselves. And actually, the, the main idea came from Narayan Mohanta. Uh, so. So these two things have been studied, the Majoranas and the Skirmians have been studied widely before independently. Mm -hmm. So these are attempts to put everything together. Right. All right, um, any other questions from the audience? Yes. Yeah, please go ahead. I'll go first of all. Alberto! I wanted to say hi, first of all. How are you? Good, how are you? Your voice is a little uh, weak. It's a little weak, sorry. Let me check. If you could increase your volume. Yeah, this is my, my fault. Okay, great. So I have a small question on the part on the Majorana um, of, from Jacek. Um, so you said that unless the pairing uh, field is strong, the Majoranas overlap. So that means that you don't observe them anymore. So how robust are these? Well, they, they, they overlap and then you get a mixture of the two. They tend to form so linear combinations. Them? So essentially you don't have um, a beautiful uh, state at zero energy. You, you just get a mixture of two entities, right? So it's like, for example, imagine the, the spin one Haldane chain with the two edge states of spins one half. If, if you made the chain too short, those spins one half will start forming a triplet and a singlet. Um, so they will interact and they will distort the physics you, you want to see. Um, so they will, I mean, split we, in, they will split in a final. They, they will be a split, yes. yes. Because these two now, essentially they are not seeing each other. But the moment they start overlapping, they see each other and they interact with one another. So the, this Majorana and this Majorana, you know, they, 
they would probably mix and create a original electron. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's just, just that. Yeah. That's it. We, oh. Yeah, to, to have a clean, a, a clean result, um, we have to exaggerate this, this, uh, this gap. Um, and you see this, even with this gigantic gap, is 0.2 EV, uh, the Majorana has a one, two, three, four, uh, uh, at least in the yellow convention, uh, we, we have five, five sides here, probably a couple more, and the same on this side. So that's already a big fraction of the 36. Um, as the gap goes down, these two uh, yellow uh, mountains, uh, they grow and they start touching each other. So okay. Just that. I, we could, I mean, it would be a piece of cake to just reduce the gap and show the results, but they could be confusing. Oh, I see, I see that. Uh, I just, just that, Alberto. Yeah. Thanks, Albert. You're doing well in, in Canada? Yes, yes. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I read about the flooding and... Uh, Except the rain, I'm enjoying it here, so... Oh, okay. So you have only... You have one one rain that lasts six months and, and exactly. then... Uh, a, a and unfortunately, yeah. Day. Unfortunately, we are in the six months that rains. Well, today is Sunday, <laughs> so... But, uh, Oh but yeah, just... I know. I know the story of those that live in in uh, in that part of the world. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Sasha. Hi. Hi. Bro. Nice. Hi, Sasha. You. Hi. A long time. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Uh, coming back to superconductivity, in your so at the end. Well, okay. Yeah, coming back to the scoop rate and your this. Oh. Uh, uh, there is some picture. Yeah, this exactly. So mm -hmm. I'm I'm maybe a little bit sleepy already. <laughs> it's all too late in in Hamburg. So uh, right, it is 10 p.m. What are you doing uh, watching me? I mean, go to oh, sleep. It's a great. It's a great. So for long time, <laughs> <laughs> it's a great. Uh, by the way, it was last week this hamburger salary prize, which is quite good now. Uh, Eugen Demler got this. Um, was fine. Mm -hmm. A lot of people from America have worked. Uh, good. So can you maybe say a few words what is different from, from left and right coup rate? And, and one, why is it maybe hand-waving argument? Why is it two holes is binding? <laughs> oh, it's the, the story that I try to, to mumble um, yeah. like uh, in here. Mm -hmm. um, so each one of these singlets is if you break it, you pay energy because we know that if you have two electrons and they form a singlet and then you have the triplet, uh, this is a, just a two body problem. Mm -hmm. uh, then then you, there's a, an energy to pay. Um, so of course, these, these cartoons are, are not taking into account the actual mobility. The kinetic energy is essentially ignored. So, um, so if you, for example, here, if you go at, a, at the regime, where the run dominates, you can exaggerate parameters, you can exaggerate the hopping and the Heisenberg so that the ranks dominate. Then this, is, this cartoon is true in that mm -hmm. extreme case. Um, and then breaking one singlet is bad. And if you uh, distribute these two holes in two uh, ranks, you break twice the number that you break in just, if you place them together. So, just that. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's just crude intuition. Okay. And, well, and, said, mm -hmm. and then because, because we have discovered, and Ian Affleck in a more complicated language um, arrived to the same conclusion many years ago, uh, we have, in the case of the Halden chain, we have these this, uh, this singlets that are not along the run. But they go um, in the between nearest neighbors with the same orbital or different orbitals. Um, but they are singlets, nevertheless. They are a spin one half singlets. So it's the same story. You you try to break as few as possible. Um, oh. As a consequence, where you see one uh, blue line, 
could be uh, the one that was originally here, could be this one, could be this one, this one, any blue line, that's where you want to place your two holes, right? It's, okay. it's just that. And, and, we are and, ignoring brutally kinetic energy. You understand that? Yeah, 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 that's great. So kinetic energy driver. And, yeah, and kinetic it, energy will, will make these two move. The bound right. state is by no means this, this tiny in size, the same here. They are spread over two or three lattice spaces. And do you have feeling on numerical simulation, as you said, that long range hopping will help? So this T prime, T double prime. <laughs> uh, good point. Uh, <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, yeah. In this context, I don't see how that will happen. Uh, that's a very good observation. I, I am fully aware that in the two dimensional um, Haber model, there is an ongoing controversy on whether the, the plane Haber model uh, superconducts or you need to add the T prime of the right side. I'm fully aware exactly, of that. Exactly, exactly. Is that, um, is that a new, dis a, a new uh, uh, discussion? <laughs> I think it's been going on for... Well, uh, in for recent tomorrow. times, the, there have been some papers in, uh, there was a paper in either science or, or nature. Yeah, no, no, I know, the, the, the oh. Simons Collaboration Company. Yes, exactly. So they claim that, you see, contradicting the work of many others before, <laughs> now they claim that the uh, Haber model um, uh, without the T-prime does not superconduct. Um, but with the T-prime, it does superconduct. I think it must have something to do with the Fermi uh, nesting. Uh, when T-prime is zero, the Fermi nesting is totally perfect. Um, maybe that's an anomalous case. Um, when you add the T-prime, now there is a curvature in the, in the branches of the Fermi level. Um, maybe that has something to do with, uh, with the pairing. But I think it's a, it's a little bit, um, the, to the extent that some of, of the Havars, with or without the prime uh, superconduct, I think the community should, should be happy. Um, after all, I mean, this is not that there is a religion of the T prime zero uh, <laughs> church and the T prime non zero church and they're fighting for, you know, like, uh, like centuries ago. Um, so the, this, who cares? If you have to add a T-prime, fine. Uh, I completely yeah. agree with you. I mean, uh, there is a... Yeah, it's... I think that slowly they converge. There is still a recent paper by, you know, TJ model, but I think it's, it's completely wrong limit. As you say, you should not be so large. It's not like you, which is good for pairing. It's great. Maybe yeah, with all yeah, your machinery yeah. of Oak Ridge, you come back to <laughs> Cooper. <Ridge. laughs> yeah, I, but look, um, that's a very good comment you're making. Uh, and Adrian also mentioned that. We are, we are not using the top of the line computers. We are using um, like the second layer. Because of the top of the line computers, the ones that break records every every other week, they break some record. Turns out that you have to you have to have a code that is very well optimized to take advantage of the communication between between the the cores. Uh, and we do not have that. Mm. You know, this very ultra quantum systems with a lot of entanglement. I I am not sure. Uh, if certainly we are not that expert to be able to achieve this majestic parallelization. I don't know if anybody in the, in the world have done that, but um, so the big machines are not our place. But then there are a bunch of second layer clusters that we're taking advantage of, you know, so, so that, that's where we run. And having Gonzalo Alvarez as a, as a link, Gonzalo, uh, is a staff member there. He loves to, to do the programming. Um, and he says, you know, I provide the codes and, and you guys get the physics out of it. That's a, that's a great arrangement, right? So 
this is how a national lab is supposed to work by, uh, by teamwork. So you divide the, the tasks, um, different people try to focus on what they like the most, and then you put things together. So. But we're, no, we are not running in the big machines. We did that only once. They gave us 24 hours. Uh, all these runs, often they take a couple of weeks. Um, so, you know, Alberto, Alberto must, must remember when he was a postdoc here. Um, these are, you know, it's not a 24 hour run in any yes, way. Yes, I do. <laughs> yes, Alberto remembers the good old days when, when the thing was about to end. Finally, they cut the power, or, or events like this uh, may have occurred. Yeah. Luis, Brasileño. Hi, how are you? How are you? <laughs> I'm fine, and you? Family here. Yes. Oh, the family is okay, good, good. Yeah, yeah every, everything, everything, everybody's fine here. San Pablo is still up. I mean, the, it was yeah, not demolished yeah. so by up and running. You know, up and running. Uh, okay. Yeah, it's been running. I mean, people were is is as if the pandemic never existed. I don't know. These people are crazy. <laughs> I, I I read that they they were, they were there are frequent power 